and welcome to Samu. We are celebrating three years of Samu and uh, joining me today is uh, Soli. So Soli is the person behind the one of the most famous uh, short films on Samu. Uh, Why is the sky dark at night? So this film, you know, uh, went on to actually get into the competition category at uh, Busan Film Festival. And uh, it also made the news headlines here in Bhutan. So, you know, Soli, thank you so much for being part of the Samu journey. Mm, that was, uh, was that your first short film? Uh, okay, uh, no, no, that was not my first short film. That was my third short film, if I mm. may remember, mm. uh, if I remember correctly. It's like a <laughs> film or uh, probably a little different in terms of like, you know, difference of that project and the others that you have done so far. What was the main difference? Compared to the first two f short films that I did, the main difference was the first two shorts were, I mean, I wrote it myself. Okay. And why, when it comes to uh, Why is the Sky Dark at Night, it was TG who wrote it. Mm -hmm. So trying to direct uh, or make a film written by somebody else, that was something really uh, different and new mm -hmm. to me. Okay, okay. So like, you know, uh, at Samo, we do feel that there is so much potential for short films from Bhutan, you know, but uh, unfortunately, number one, uh, we realize that the, the audience in Bhutan, you know, it's still a long, I think it still has a long way to go to really uh, enjoy short films, you know, so they're very like used to watching certain kind of cinema. You know, mostly commercial kind of films and I did feel that uh, most of the audience uh, do not have that kind of literacy, film literacy to uh, enjoy short films you know, and uh, films that are a little more different. So, uh, but in global space there is, uh, there is a lot of space you know, for short films from different, different parts of the world. Um, at Samu, when we did this project, you know, the short film project uh, in, our, in the beginning, we really wanted to give space to independent filmmakers in Bhutan, you know, and uh, all the short films that we have done, in fact, you know, uh, I think uh, two or three of them did really well. It was picked up by international film festivals also, which actually showed to us that there is so much potential, not just in terms of talent in Bhutan, but also potential of the stories, you know, to go global, you know, so, um, like you as a filmmaker, what do you feel, you know, that uh, platforms like Samu, like we need to do, you know, in, or really in order for us to really push uh, the short film uh, creation in Bhutan also and have more people make short films in Bhutan? Like that uh, initial, what do you say, the sh four short films uh, project that you had, if Samu could uh, allocate, like, I don't know, more budget and push for more filmmakers to come up with more shorts, and also uh, simultaneously, since you have the platform and give it more media and what do you say, more uh, coverage promotion, I would say. Mm -hmm. And like you pointed out, since we think we, our audience viewership lack the, what do you say, uh, film literacy, especially when it comes to shorts and cinema that is different than the mainstream commercial. Okay. So since we have the pl platform, and yeah, if we can try and get more short films out every year, mm. I think that would help. I mean, to begin with, because without any short films, how can we uh, promote or push or educate? Okay, so that's noted. And you know, going forward, like we've completed three years now, you know, and uh, the, we are really looking forward to grow as a platform, but at the same time, we are very conscious of the fact, you know, that we can only grow if the entire creative industry sees growth, you know. So in that space, uh, what do you think, you know, is some of the main challenges that's holding our industry down right now, you know? What are some of the main challenges do you see as a filmmaker? I can only talk as a person who makes, tries to make films. So I think the, the only challenge I can think of right now is that uh, fear to tell stories any differently than the way it's been told. So the, the fear of trying to do something different, I would say. And with that, of course, comes the, especially with short films and, and uh, every time you try to do something different, the most, what do you say, logical uh, challenges that you'll face is the uh, 
the finance side of it, I would say. And uh, uh, with that, biggest challenge is to find a balance between like creativity, the art, the creative side of uh, aspect of filmmaking, and also to balance it with the business side, I think, mm -hmm. especially when the money comes in, mm -hmm. be it a short film, like a two, three lakh short film, or like 20, 30 lakh local commercial feature film, or even two, three crores, mm -hmm. I don't know, international, I mean, f feature that you intend to run it in international circuit, whatever, but mm -hmm. that's what I feel the challenge is. You are, I think you're right about that because you know, uh, no matter what kind of films we do, yeah. uh, it has to be successful of course. for us, you know, or producers to invest again in the exactly. project, right? Because at the end of the day, for people who put money, invest so much time, resource in it, it's a business for them. Mm -hmm. And we, as a filmmaker, I feel we also have that responsibility mm -hmm. to towards the producers, towards the people who put money, time, and resources into it. Just because, I don't know, that's what I feel. Yeah. So like, you know, uh, looking into the future, you know, what do you see like, you know, uh, because there's a lot of now emphasis from uh, the government side to push the growth of the creative industries. You know, so do you feel that uh, with the right amount of investment coming into the sector, you know, uh, would like, not just in terms of funding, you know, in terms of funding, but also like, with policies, policy support, with funding support, you know, uh, Bhutan has the potential to really, like, you know, becoming, to become a very vibrant uh, creative industry, to make a very vibrant creative industry in Bhutan. Of course, of course. Cool? I've always believed that uh, Bhutan uh, has the potential mm -hmm. because we have so many uh, territories uh, when it comes to stories that's mm -hmm. still untapped. We still have so many, what do you say, uh, ways uh, that we can be true to telling our stories. No matter what kind of uh, changes in the policies or the amount of funds or the kind of supports that come in, but at the end of the day, if we keep on making the same films that we have done for the last 20, 30 years, then, then I doubt. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, with, with so much resources or with limited resources, I think the essence of uh, like for our industry to grow creatively, truthfully, is to tell stories uh, differently, honestly, more importantly, and to tell like real stories. So I think that's where I feel we could improve. And like you said, with the additional support that coming in, and if all the policies could also look into that, I think that would be helpful. That's what I feel. All right. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. You know, and once again, sorry, you know, we wanted to let you know that uh, although you know we've not been able to work as much as we want to with you, but you know we really uh, value uh, whatever you have done uh, for some so far, and uh, we wanted to let you know that you've played such a critical, you know, role <laughs> and part, you know, in the three years of Samu. So thank you so much for that, and we look forward to working. Thank you so much, and once again, congrats. And I hope some will go like 30 years. <laughs> Thank you.